What's going on guys, Cyric here, just thought I'd make another video on Reptorium this week because futures are finally here. But what does this really mean for the end user? Well, what futures allows us to do is set up a type of transaction run on the blockchain to an individual or service over a period of time that you determine. So for example, let's say that you wanted to pay a friend out a month in advance for let's say like a product or service or even inodes, then you can schedule when those coins will actually be spendable. Well, it doesn't sound too exciting on the surface, I know that sounds a little bit boring, but this is actually a pretty serious update under the hood, since a lot of the foundation for things like assets and smart contracts is already there with this new futures update. So let's get into how to actually make a Raptorium futures transaction. The first thing that you're going to want to do is obviously open up your wallet. If you haven't updated your wallet yet, please check the GitHub so you can get access to this feature. So now that your wallet is open and fully synced up, all you're going to do is hop over to the send tab. Don't worry about the coin control features. You can find that under options and then wallet and then click enable coin features. We won't be using that in this example. So when you jump over to your send tab, it should look something like this. And if you notice, there is a little itty bitty future button right here. And what happens when you click this future button, a couple fields for maturity and lock time will, will appear on your screen. Now to understand what these values actually mean, the maturity value in blocks on a futures transaction is the amount of blocks it takes for the coin sent to be spendable. And this only applies if the time is less than the lock time. And moving over to the lock time, the lock time, which is determined in seconds, also determines when the coins in a futures transaction can be spendable, but this only applies if the time is less than the maturity value. So these kind of go hand in hand. Essentially, when you set up these fields for a futures transaction, you usually just want to pick one over the other. I think the main reason for having two different values is because blocks aren't going to be found exactly every two minutes. There's going to be a bit of variance over a longer period of time, especially if we're talking about setting up a futures transaction a month in advance, for example. And if you look over here on the right to where it says fee 100 RTM, this 100 RTM is going to be split between smart nodes and miners. So 80% of this 100 RTM goes to smart nodes and the other 20% goes to miners. So if you're focused on sending a futures transaction at a very specific time, go ahead and use the lock time function. And if you want to, say, for example, set up a futures transaction to be spendable at exactly, let's say, block 500,000, then go ahead and use the maturity function. Just make sure the value of whichever function you're using is less than the other one. You might have to do a little bit of math since the maturity value of one is going to be the same as 120 over in this field. Okay, so now that we understand what maturity and lock time actually mean, let's go ahead and do an example and we're going to send a... We're going to send a futures transaction to my father's address. So just as an example here, we'll just say 1000 RTM. And let's say I don't want this. I don't want these coins to be spendable by my father until 15 minutes after I send it. So in this case, 15 minutes is going to be 900, 900 seconds. And since we're going to be utilizing the lock time function for maturity, we're just going to go ahead and, and make this a really, really big value. So we know for a fact that the lock time function will be used in favor for this transaction. So now that we have our value set up, what we're going to do is we're going to click the send button. My wallet is encrypted. So let me just enter in my password. And before we click the send button, let's take a look at everything that's going on here. We are sending 1000 RTM to my dad's address. The confirmations in 10,000 blocks isn't too relevant since we're going to be using the lock time instead. As you can see, time in 900 seconds from first confirmed, which is 15 minutes. And then it'll tell you this transaction will likely mature based on time using any available funds. That's fine. Going to go ahead and click the yes button to send. And if we double click on the information for this transaction, we scroll down a little bit. As you can see, the maturity time and the lock time is all correct. I sent this at 1.05 p.m. and it's saying that it will be fully matured by 1.20 p.m. On the receiving end of a futures transaction, they will see the, the coins enter their account as soon as you send the transaction, but they will not be able to spend any of those coins until the determined time has passed. And that's pretty much it. That's all there really is to futures. I know it's not a super duper complex system, but I guarantee you there's people out there that are probably pretty confused about those two values between maturity and lock time. So I hope this video helps. Anyways, guys, that's pretty much it. Peace.